and Joe, another episode ready to go. They're gonna talk about the good and the trash and anything in between. Cherishing make believe, get ready for Halloween. It's the horror show. I know you miss those guys. Tune in and find out what's on their list tonight. They butcher and dissect, take apart and mutilate. Listen to your two favorite brainiacs communicate. It's the horror show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Show, a show that dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers all of your favorite and not-so-favorite horror movies and other horror-related events. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. This is, like, the quickest we're kicking off a, a, an episode. Um, it is. Because we have, I, I mean, we have not good things to say. I, th- I think we're both aggravated at this movie. <laughs> Dude, uh, <laughs> we have gotten, th- th- this is a fact, and I know, I know you've gotten the same messages, but... Like, even even as recently today, shout out Trade Voorhees. Like, I, I got messages from people that are like, hey, ever since you guys came back, every episode's been a home run. It's been, like, knocking it out the park. And and, uh, and truthfully, I, I feel the same. Like, I, I feel like it's just been uh, flowing. I, f- I feel like we're having fun doing it. And it's because we took control and, uh, you know, picked picked movies that would be fun to talk about. <laughs> So 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 naturally for this week, uh, we let our, our our patrons pick the movie, which which they deserve, you know. Yeah. They're, they're patrons, <clears throat> incredibly thankful. But uh, boy, did you fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna continue that, but I just want to. I, I I might clear my throat a ton in this episode, and I apologize because it's probably gonna sound awful. But I, I'm a little under the weather. But um, yeah, no. So listen. Did they fuck up or did I fuck up? I think I fucked up, Joe. I think okay, so, so, so. So this is the problem with with democracy, right? <laughs> because because it's the illusion of choice, but you gave them those choices to choose from. So <laughs> you know who's really who's really to blame? It's me. I think it's me. So here's let me get into a little bit of what happened here. And we could break down this nightmarish scenario we're in right now. <laughs> so <clears throat> we went to Patreon to let them choose. It's one of the perks of like the top tier. You get to go in polls and choose movies. The idea of that is that me and Joe will still pick the movies and then um, they'll vote on them, right? So <laughs> we first did which... You could choose a cult classic category for this week, um, and I, I, I chose them from the cult classic because I know in October they do like some of the best um, weeks, just because it's Halloweeny. Um, and I forget what it was, but it was like Monster Vision Week, Slasher Week, Zombie Week, something else. <clears throat> we land on Monster Vision Week, which was not as great of a selection as you'd imagine, <laughs> especially because we've done a lot of those movies. A either in our monster vision tribute or just in general. Right. So, and I'm sure I didn't even think about it till afterwards. I was like, fuck, I probably went through this list that year. We did the monster vision tribute and picked like the four best ones. <laughs> so, um, I came up with this list and, and cause I, I tried to choose spookier movies for, for the Halloween feel. <clears throat> and, um, I, I, I think I fucked up. I think I fucked up mainly on this one. Here's the thing. I read that it was a haunted house movie, and I was like, that's great for Halloween. That's all the research I did into it. Other than the name, Burnt Offerings, which, quite frankly, does that not sound amazing? It, it does. It, it, <laughs> I had seen this before, and like it blocked it out of my memory. And I, I told you when, when you chose it, and when I saw that it was in the lead, I'm like, I'm really hoping... Like it's just a similarly similarly named title that I think I saw because what the fuck are we gonna talk about? But yeah, you but but see, that's that's the problem. Yeah, you could have eliminated that mm-hmm. from the list, right? Yeah. But these people still voted for it over like Skeeter <laughs> and, maybe, and Project Metal Piece. So who really is to blame? But maybe but maybe they thought the same thing I did. Because for some reason I don't know. I saw the burnt offerings name. I'm like, that's gotta be good, <laughs> like without without even fucking doing it. Um, yeah, well, much much like witch trap or you know witch board, uh, th- there's no burnt offerings in this entire movie. No, no, <laughs> I don't even know. I no, there's nothing. There's barely any death in this movie. 
uh, uh, is is there even death until the very last scene? <laughs> There's one death. Well, yeah, no, you're right. There's one death earlier, and I th- she, that's still in the last quarter of the movie, and that's an elderly person dying of old age. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> because I watched I watched Joe Bob's Monster, Monster Vision after the movie. I yeah. watched his like um, speech on it. You know what he yeah. does. And he's like driving totals three deaths, and and even that seemed too high because I just watched the movie. Joe, the, the fucking, the fucking Joe Bob's. This is the driving totals. I don't think there's ever been driving totals this small. Three dead bodies and a lot of strange noises and other occurrences. That's all he said, and he said that, that's, well, that. That's it. What else could he possibly say? He said, that's about it. Two and a half stars, which is very generous. A very generous rating for this. Agreed. Now. And, and, and those strange occurrences are literally literally like uh, plants getting green again. Yeah, yes. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started. So here are. <laughs> those are the drive-in totals for the movie we're going to get to talk about tonight. Here are the drive-in totals for the movies that were not voted for. Okay, I'll start with just the totals, and then you, I mean, you could guess the movie, but it doesn't matter. Um, Eight dead bodies, ten dead cattle, I mean, you're going to get this one, 50 dead mosquitoes, five giant mosquito attacks, blood sucking, one motor vehicle chase with cliff plunge, one bad peyote trip, one giant dead mosquito splattered on a windshield, one fist fight, one one gun battle, Exploding mine with fireball, gratuitous Michael J. Pollard, kung fu, taser fu, blow touch, blow torch fu, skeeter fu, two stars, and that is obviously for yeah, it's fucking skeeter. And and, and uh, those that voting so much more what? fun. <laughs> of course it does. Okay, this the movie that that was chosen doesn't even have foos. Like you couldn't even say like burnt offering foo. You couldn't even say haunted house foo because that house was barely haunted. Also, <laughs> based based on name alone. Every other choice was, was was far superior. I'm not sure this was even... I, I don't even know what burn Offerings was. Here's the next one. Zero Breasts that we passed up on. Another one we passed up on. Zero Breasts, Seven Dead Bodies, Bloody Refrigerator, Legs Roll, Blood Ocean Drowning, blood art, Bloody Art Varking, Sausage Strangling, Barbecued Sandy Dennis, Gratuitous Dean Martin Background Music, Red meat foo, golf club foo, barbecue foo, steak knife foo, wine rack foo, midnight snack foo. Four stars. That's got to be fucking parents, right? Yeah, parents, which was our... Yeah, parents is awesome. <laughs> Here's another one. 13 dead bodies, no breasts, face chewing, stabbing, skull crushing, liver cleaving, monster cam, gratuitous rekindled romance, one and a half stars. Monster club? One and a half stars. Uh, no, I couldn't find Monster Club anywhere. That was fucking grim, which I don't even know what it's about. It looks stupid as fuck. I, we're going to end up doing it for sure. But, <laughs> but even that, it's one and a half stars, a full star less. And that sounds so much better. 13 dead bodies. What is that? The, uh, three t- No, I'm terrible at math. It's four times the amount of what we had in, the, in this movie. Yes. Um, the last one, nine dead bodies, one reanimated body, two dead beasts, one fuzzy wang doodle, gooey arm covered in worms, <laughs> multiple werewolf attacks, needle to the inner thigh, stomach ripping, steel rod through the foot, torpedo through the leg, exploding breast. Oh, no, no. Exploding beast. <laughs> werewolf cam, gratuitous chef, bazooka foo, two and a half stars. And that was Project Metal, Metal Beast. Beast. And um, here we are with three dead bodies and a lot of strange noises, <laughs> which... I'd actually argue that I don't think there are strange noises in this. Uh, well, first of all, I would agree. Second of all, uh, is there any any noise other than the score in the entire movie? Because the score was like deafening. Oh, <laughs> that's really funny. Sorry, I just like picked up on what you said. No, the score was so fucking loud. And oh god, I hated everything about this movie. Um, <clears throat> Sean, the last the last two minutes were arguably one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in a movie, and I don't get it. I don't understand. Do you, do you? Um, I really tried to piece it together at the end, but like at the very end, it really loses everything. <laughs> um, Joe Bob, 
um, who is somebody that I say think kind of goes on the brighter side of all movies, which is like fine, right? Like it's cool. Um, was at the end of this was like, I don't understand this movie. Um, and if you think you do, uh, send me a message because I would love to know. <laughs> He's like, I've watched this a bunch of times and it's never made any sense. Um, this was re- written and directed by Dan Curtis, who did uh, the Dark Sh- Shadow shows, both of them, and okay. Trilogy of Terror. So with Karen Black, who's in this movie. Correct. That I knew. Karen Black, uh, Oliver Reed, who's kind of a mess. Meredith, Burgess, uh, Burgess Meredith, uh, the fucking penguin from Batman, um, the Batman TV show. He's in it. And or, Betty- or Rocky's trainer, as I'm sure more people would, would know him as. <laughs> When I think Burgess Meredith, all I think about is fucking penguin. Dude, that penguin's the top. I know you do. That penguin's the fucking tops. <laughs> I know. No, dude, honestly, that's all I think of. And I think of that one Twilight Zone episode where he's the last person on Earth in the library. Yes. And, yes. and whenever whenever I reference that, everyone's like, why don't you just say the guy from Rocky? Wait, that's, <laughs> that's probably the one everyone knows him from. <laughs> um. Yeah, Oliver Reed. I looked into him a little bit. Boy, he's a uh, he is a character. Have you do you know this guy? Uh, I know him from the Oliver movie where he frustratingly uh, doesn't play the character Oliver, even though that's his name. <laughs> it's Sykes. Um, Reed was known for his alcoholism and binge drinking. There's a million anecdotes out there. Uh, the most famous is Reed and thirty six friends drinking in one evening sixty gallons of beer. 32 bottles of scotch, 17 bottles of gin, four crates of wine, and a bottle of baby sham, which I don't know what that is. Um, which, like, between 36, for, I mean, that's still a lot with 36. 36 but, but um, a gathering of 36 people is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> um, Afterwards, he was like, no, 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 that's ridiculous. He's like, I just drank 106 pints of beer on a two-day binge. That's it. <laughs> the rest of that was so exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> and then Steve McQueen um, also told a story about him that was uh, he flew to the UK to talk to him about doing a movie. And he was like, oh, let's just go out. And McQueen was like, uh, all right. And they ended up staying out for like two days. Um, and he just... He got so drunk, he threw up all over McQueen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, he good. was also in Gladiator. D- d- actually, I knew that. That was his last film, right? Yeah, he died during it, and they CGI'd him, which seems crazy for 1999. But they did. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I could tell he was a fucking drunk. <laughs> big Yo. stuff. Uh, listen, so, I, so I read this before the movie and I was like, I promise I will not look into this and see if he's drunk during this movie. He's drunk during this fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. He fucking is. The way he's acting and talking is ridiculous. His eye movements, fucking absurd. Um, yeah, he died during uh, the filming of Gladiator. Um, the night before, witnesses say he drank eight pints of beer. He had a dozen shots of rum, half a bottle of whiskey, and a few shots uh, of Hennessy uh, in a drinking match against a sailor on shore leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, they confirmed this because his his bill was over five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he then started challenging sailors to arm wrestling matches and beating five of them. <laughs> <laughs> what a legend! <laughs> Reed suddenly collapsed, dying while en route to the hospital in an ambulance. Bummer. Jesus. Um, because he he was he was also good friends with uh, Keith Moon. Yeah, yes, movie. and they had was, like binge drinking nights also. Yeah, I mean Keith Moon's like arguably the the biggest uh, alcoholic in like pop culture history. <laughs> like, we say it like it's glorifying. Like like these these guys. I mean they had a crippling addiction, but I mean these guys were the epitome of excess. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um. The, my my favorite thing out of all of this, and again, it's not funny because he was an alcoholic, but like at the same time, like come on. Um, so so they were they were giving him a they nominated him for best supporting actor in 2010 for the uh, the glad or no not in 2010 um, in 2000 for the Gladiator and uh, Russell Crowe in interview in 2010 they asked him about it and he's like listen <laughs> I never got along with him 
Uh, but he visited me in my dreams and asked me to talk kindly of him. So I should. Uh, but we never had a pleasant conversation. <laughs> Which is basically like not saying something nice about him. Uh, yeah, his ghost told me to be nice. Uh, but I, I don't like him. <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> Uh, Joe Bob mentioned in his talks on this that it, this was a big budget movie. It was two million dollars. Believe that to be true. Okay, so here's here's what I'm thinking, right? So I looked this up. So it's the budget's two million. It did one point six million in the box office. So not good news, <laughs> bad news. So I looked up like other movies around that time. Rocky was nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars and made two hundred and twenty five million at the box office. That's fucking insane yeah that's fucking insane carrie was 1.8 million uh, made 33 million at the box office um <clears throat> omen was 2.8 million made 60 at the box office so but all those movies had a lot of effects a lot of shit going on in them you know um where did the two million dollars go in this movie it, it had to have gone to getting like burgess meredith and betty davis and oliver reed and like had to go to the payroll and to the house and maybe to Oliver Reed's drinking bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, but even the house like shouldn't cost that much. It was shot in California. It looks it it looks fancy, but I think it's just like a mansion in California. And I started making this when I started making this list, I was like trying to prove that they put money into it, like a lot of money into it. And then I was like, wait a minute. What the fuck did they use two million dollars for? Rocky was made for nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, dude. Dude, I mean, if for a haunted one. house movie, there's like, like, there's nothing spooky. Go- like, you couldn't even say they used it for mechanics to make doors open because no, don't, like, <laughs> no, there's no fucking way, dude. I, I, I am hard pressed to call this a haunted house movie. <laughs> I am too. Joke. <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like. Kind of haunted house, kind of possession, but again, like like the series that unfold throughout it never pay off. Like the guy, it's sort of like an Amityville horror vibe where the like the dad's losing his mind a bit, but then he always stops before doing anything devastating. And that's that's what I wrote later because I was I was like I, we were talking. This was made in seventy six, um, and then Amityville was seventy nine, and. Obviously, does like a million times better job of making a haunted house movie. But I was just curious which one kind of came first. I couldn't remember when Amityville was made. So, um, but it would have been devastating if this came after Amityville because it was like. Uh, it's, it's funny you say that because, like, halfway through, I was like, this, you know, maybe these people just really wanted to make an Amityville horror. And I was like, fuck, that didn't even come out yet. Like, these people just suck at making haunted house movies. <laughs> Oh, man. So, this is our movie. This is what we're stuck with. <laughs> this was agonizing to watch. I fell asleep during it three times. Um, It was... I think... I think I, I would have... I wouldn't have enjoyed it, so, so, let, so let's clear that up. But I think I might have enjoyed it a little bit more if I if I knew I didn't have to talk about it. Because this is the type of movie I fucking hate talking about. Because... What what am I supposed to say for the next forty five minutes of this episode? <laughs> so there is so much downtime, and and the high stakes scenes in this are are arguments between um, a man and his wife, and that it's the same fight four different times, it, it, and they yeah. say the same exact thing, and nothing nothing changes in the movie whatsoever. There's one scene I do love, and it's when he's about to drown the boy, and that just makes me laugh. Wait. Also, sorry, I keep, I'm like jumping all around, but do we know what these people's relationships are to each other? Because quite honestly, I'm fucking confused who's a family member and who's not. Because <laughs> you have the mother and father, right? Yep. Oliver Reed and Karen Black. Yes. Is that their son or is that her son? Dude, I don't know because he kept calling – the son kept calling him dad. But I thought in the beginning, like when they're in the car together, I, I thought Oliver Reed made made a, like 
a reference to him not being his son. I, <laughs> I couldn't figure it like out. <laughs> the, dude, the way they talked to, to each other was like as if they were like were not friendly with each other sometimes. It was really bizarre. But then other times he seemed very much to be like, that's my son. I, I, I was so fucking confused. And then an old lady shows up in the first like 25 minutes with them. Uh, and who is that? Because no one calls her mom. <laughs> no, that that's that's uh, the dad's aunt. The dad's aunt. Yes. Okay. Which is weird because she doesn't have a British accent. In she, I mean, I mean, I guess that doesn't matter. She could. It possibly could happen, right? But it's yeah, yeah. it's insane. It's insane. They could have just. Why is that? I don't even know. All right, let's get into it. So we meet. <clears throat> We meet Oliver Reed and Karen Black, our couple, driving up to a new house in the country. They're renting this house. Uh, it it looked it looked fine to me. Um, <laughs> there was like some vines on it, but I didn't know if that was supposed to be there. And the family is just like, "This is fucking appalling." It's like the biggest <laughs> fucking mansion I've ever seen. And I would be so happy. They are so fucking disgusted with it. They're just like, Ugh, "I don't even want to go inside. This is fucking disgusting." Um, they knock on the door. We meet Walker, the handyman, who, when we see him, I'm like, this is fun, a character. He's not in the movie anymore. After this. Dude, I thought he was going to be, you know, a huge, a huge role because he's such a quirky oddball. Like, I would have bet money that he comes back into play at the end. He, he would have been so Why fun. They- he would have been so fun to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. But, like, what was the point of having him? And also, you always need bodies to fucking kill, which I guess you don't when you're not going to kill anybody in the fucking that, movie. Fantastic point. Fantastic point. That if you weren't going to make him like a henchman or the villain, uh, you could have at least murdered him. <laughs> <laughs> and you chose not to. Um, it, it's such a missed opportunity. Um, and, and even, I mean, even the house, the house owners um, that we meet at the beginning, they've got some personality there and you think maybe they'll come back into play. And again, they do not either. Um, no, they do a voiceover at the voiceover at the end. That's, that's our payoff. That's our fucking payoff on the whole thing. Um, Oh my God. It's so insane. So we meet, uh, we meet Walker. He's like, my name's Walker, the handyman. I keep everything spick and span. He is covered in dirt (laughs) and has no teeth whatsoever. (laughs) I keep everything spick and span. The house is very clean, but he is not. And that makes zero sense. Um, the one thing uh, I did like at the beginning of this movie was it was it was very slow. And I could write down all my notes, you know, without missing the movie. Unlike uh, Blood Diner, which was fast talking for 90 minutes. Um, so that <laughs> that was good until it wasn't like about 20 minutes. in, I was like, I would they really need to speed this shit up. And yeah, this is a two-hour movie. It is a two-hour movie, and <laughs> dude, it pissed me off so fucking bad because we were talking about hosts last night in our in our live show and how it's just like short and to the point. Yes. Why is this two hours? <laughs> dude, dude, there are you. I know we've said this probably about a million movies. You could trim this so easily. I, honestly, I might trim it to like an hour cut of this movie, and you will lose nothing. You, I what? promise you, you will lose nothing. I can do it. I can do it for you. Dude, we watched the guy like clear out his pool <laughs> in real time. Like, <laughs> trying to start the generator, trying to like pump the water. Like, fuck you. Joe, I don't need what, to see that. What was that machine, by the way? I, I, I don't know. I, I think they're trying to f- fill the, the pool. They must have been right. using, like, fucking pond water because the pool is fucking green. <laughs> and even the boy's like, hey, man, you're going to throw some fucking chlorine in this? <laughs> that was, like, my favorite part of the movie. Kid was like, hey, hey, Pops, like, what the fuck's going on? Like, shit looks <laughs> disgusting. Um, yeah, I couldn't figure out what that machine was. And when they cut to the pool later and it was just a filthy fucking green mess, I was like... All right. Well, I guess they were doing nothing with that machine. <laughs> um, so the family sees this uh, mansion. Uh, it, they're shocked because it's enormous and, 
you know, they're renting, they're trying to rent it, but they, they don't want to spend a lot. Um, they go inside, they notice some photos of the house from a hundred years ago up until recently, and they all look the same, which like, it doesn't seem that shocking to me, but we know it's shocking <laughs> because the loud ass music is like, bum, bum, bum. Dude, I know I said it before. The score was, was so extreme. Honestly, probably the best part of the movie too. I mean, it's the only thing that told you that things were supposed to be shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Because otherwise you would not notice what was supposed to be shocking. Dude, the light turning on, like, I don't even understand that scene. They were just like, oh, the light's out. And then the light ended up coming back on, which, like, is not that weird of an occurrence. And, and this, the fucking camera slow fucking zooms into the light bulb that's just on. And the music's like, da, 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 da. And you're like, what the fuck? It does it right here in this opening scene, too, with the, the guy, the handyman, when he's like, oh, the plant died. And Burgess Meredith is like, maybe you should check again. And it's like, <laughs> the music the music is like, dun, 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 it zooms in on the plant. And you see, like, one, one green leaf. <laughs> that is literally what I have written down. There's one green leaf on the plant. And the fucking handyman's like, oh, all right. <laughs> And honestly, he could have just missed that. Like, if the rest of the plant is dead, that wouldn't be that extreme. No. <laughs> it's like, is this supposed to be, like, a, a, a reveal here? Not only is it not that extreme, but if you're the handyman, you're going to be like, hey, asshole, that one leaf's probably going to die also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at the rest of the This plant. is a giant fucking dead plant, and you're talking about one leaf, and you're, like, pointing out one leaf to me as if that's cause for me to be an idiot. <laughs> And also, can we already address the people that are going to come to us for not understanding the story or not understanding? Any explanation you give to me as to why that was revealing or what's happening and why things are turning back on or uh, growing again, it doesn't fucking pay off, even if you can make sense of it. So I genuinely just, just don't, don't believe. I, 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 I was going to give the same warning. I genuinely don't believe anyone understands this, Joe. And if they do, they are taking... They are taking... Um, what do you what do you call it? Taking um, uh, they're making assumptions because there's nothing in this movie that you could be like, well, it means this or that. There was a point in the movie where I there's a point in the movie where I thought I had an idea of what was happening, and I was like, okay, maybe it's this, but they're just explaining it poorly. But then the end just fucking destroys anything you thought of. Agreed. Agreed. The- the most frustrating part, and obviously we're still in the opening scene, and we can we should probably move on. But everything that they set up has virtually endless possibilities of where they could have gone with it, and they somehow chose the stupidest path to follow. Oh, uh, I, I don't even understand why this would be a path. of all the paths dude it's a haunted house you could do whatever the fuck you want it's 1976 you could get a little weird uh you know carrie came out this year that was kind of that must have been fucking jarring for america you know um so we're not locked into like house on haunted hill skeleton dude the exorcist came out three years before this is that had a oh. girl jamming a crucifix into her fucking vagina? Like uh, you could have done I, I, so I, much more. You could have done so much more. So I I don't know where this was. I don't know what was happening or where they got the money from or what it was put into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it, they 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 fucked this up. Um, it's it's just fucking mess. Well, they meet the homeowners. Um, who who also don't do them any favors by just asking them super creepy fucking questions <laughs> that you would be like, we're not renting this fucking house because they're just like, um, uh, do you like spooky things? And they're like, what? It's like, Oh, nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. Uh, one of the things they say, they're like, Oliver is Oliver Reed is like, Hey, listen, uh, this seems great and all, or, or no, the homeowner's like, Hey, listen, you do this, but you have to take care of it during the time you're here. That's it. You, that's all you got to do. And then Oliver Reed's like, all right, listen, this place is fucking huge. Like, we can't do that by ourselves. And she's like, well, the house takes care of itself. Like, well, then why did you just ask them to take care of it? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? I'd be out of there so fucking fast. Um, 
<clears throat> she also tells them yeah. that the rent is nine hundred dollars for the whole summer, which is incredible, even yeah. for that time. Yeah. Uh, and and Oliver Reed himself is like, "What's the catch?" And then both. Burgess Meredith and, and his sister are like, oh, why do you think there's a catch? And then immediately explain the catch to him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's honestly, that's a huge fucking catch. <laughs> it's the biggest fucking catch I've ever heard. I would never do this in a million years. Uh, 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 oh, wait, yeah. And they talk about it being haunted. Um, they, they tell us about their mother and they tell us that she's 80, but looks 60. Doesn't matter because we don't get to see her. Most irrelevant detail that you could possibly throw into this movie. And so I write, I'm writing these notes because you're thinking some of this shit is going to pay off at some point or be a detail that you need to know. And it's not at all. Um, and she never leaves the house. So now I'm thinking, you know, it's a house that never ages, right? Or somehow if you stay inside, you never age. Or it was like Psycho, where, you know, she's dead, like her spirit or something haunts it. That, she's just locked in the room. That's a possibility also. Um, then n- none of these, uh, none of these are the case. Uh, there's, it gets close to that though. Um, but the catch is they have to feed the grandmother all summer. <laughs> and the dad, Oliver Reed, is like, hey, um, I think we should really talk. go home, talk about this, see if this is what we want to do. And the wife's like, why? <laughs> why the fuck would you do that? I'm not feeding anybody. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? I would, I, would, I would get a fucking divorce right there. I'd be like, that's it. I'm fucking done. You can fucking feed the old lady. I'm out of here. I- I'm not And going. you don't even, you're not allowed to see her. You have to just like leave the food. For, yeah, you have to leave it in like the parlor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they go home to discuss or wait, no, no, no. Oh wait. Yeah. We'd already talked about the, the dead plant scene. Um, they go home to discuss and she's like, you're so fucking embarrassing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he did not do anything wrong. He was just like, oh, uh, this all sounds literally really asked weird. what the catch was. That, yeah. that, that, that was all he did, which Thank God he asked that because they probably wouldn't have told him. <laughs> no, they would have just left the grandmother, which they do anyway. <laughs> uh, they go home. They discuss this, though. Um, and the guy's like, we have to take care of a 90-year-old woman. And she's like, she's 85. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, don't worry. I'll take care of her. She'll be my responsibility, which, like, she's a fucking dog or something. <laughs> Um, And they decide to go and they bring up their aunt, his aunt, Oliver Reed's aunt. Um, And when they get to the house, um, they just left the mom there with a note that's basically like, uh, enjoy. (laughs) (laughs) And then who plays the older woman? Betty Davis. Is that who plays? Wait, who plays the aunt? That's Betty Davis. It is. Okay. So. Fun fact, Betty Davis, like, I've, I've only ever seen her super young. Uh, she she is, uh, she is, she has such bags under her eyes. In this it's insane. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's makeup get up. I, I did not, I did not expect that at all. That, that was, that was alarming. Um, so, uh, Betty Davis is there now and she's like, they do crazy things sometimes, old people, which I don't know, probably got a fucking hoot and. 76. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. Uh, the mom goes upstairs. She checks on the old lady who doesn't answer. And there's just a giant table there with like 8 million frames on it. And uh, they kind of all look the same. Um, which it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, she also notes none of the clocks are working. Which again, you're like, ooh, is that spooky? Nope. It's not because the clocks all start working later and that's the end of that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This is also where the lights go out and then, but they don't go out. I shouldn't even say that they open the fridge and the light doesn't work. And they're like, Oh, the light doesn't work. And then the kid opens the pantry and turns on the light and the light works. I don't know if those two are connected, (laughs) but based on the ominous music, (laughs) I guess they are. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That is one of the worst, like, 
<laughs> like, ooh, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I would literally, I've seen that in my own house multiple times. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's insane. And then uh, Joe Bob um, cuts in here uh, for his show and he goes, uh, ooh, the light bulbs don't work. Then it does. Must be a haunted house. <laughs> And then when he comes back from commercial, he goes back to the strange house where all the clocks are broken. <laughs> Which like wait, so you, you so, watched the whole uh, Monster Vision episode? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Damn, I should have done that. Probably, at least Joe Bob interrupting would have made it no, a little bit more. So that that clip you sent me is all the interruptions. Oh, okay. okay. So so it's like twelve minutes of interruptions um, for this because it was the second movie which he usually does less um, interruptions yeah. for. <clears throat> so the first movie was Halloween 3. So everyone got a treat this <laughs> this night. <laughs> oh, man. Um, we get to a scene of the cleaning in... We get Oh, we get scenes of cleaning inside the house, fixing a pool, and taking a hike. In, the, in that order. Uh, and they're all as mind-numbing as you can imagine. And... <laughs> The only one that matters is the hike because they find a graveyard, <laughs> right? Now, the graveyard scene is kind of cool because he's like, oh, they're all Allardyces. All- what are they called? Allardyces? Yeah. Allardyces. He's like, oh, they're all Allardyces graves, but none of them are newer than the 1890s. <laughs> so now you're like, okay, so maybe the house is keeping them alive. Like, they are ghosts in the house. I No, but ghosts would mean they're dead. They're, they're just in the house. They can live forever as long as they're in the house. Still doesn't make sense because the brother and sister left the house. <laughs> right. And mother is supposedly there. This is all we have to work on right now. Um, Now, again, I wrote these notes down as if they mean something, but I should have known because <laughs> the dad and son just run away. And that's the end of the scene. <laughs> they just like frolic out into the woods and like, Ugh. It's so stupid. Uh, the mom talks to Mrs. Allardyce, but she's not responding. Um, she tells us that she's not eating. And she's like, you need to eat, Mrs. Allardyce. Are you sneaking down to the kitchen to eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what she's doing. Imagine being forced to feed an old woman and you find out she's just going down to the kitchen every night and eating by herself. Such a waste of time. Oh, uh, <clears throat> The mom is starting to get a little weird here. The mom is uh, ignoring her family's pleas to like go out and do shit. She's just kind of hanging out in that weird lobby next to Mrs. Allardyce's room, looking at fucking frames and listening to music boxes, all of which does not pay off for anybody. Um, the family starts swimming. The, the, the Oliver Reed and the kids start swimming in the pool. He dives to the bottom and he finds a pair of glasses with a hole in them. Again, cool setup to maybe something nefarious that's happened there <laughs> i honestly forgot that he dove down to the bottom and got the glasses does does that even get referenced again joe it does not get referenced again it means nothing to anybody the glasses have a hole that looks like somebody got shot in the eyeball yeah so you're yeah, like and- oh man finally we're picking up we're gonna get like a murder story there Dude, is the camera like pans in and zooms in on his face while he's holding it with like a, a puzzled look like, oh, my God. And again, the music <laughs> of like, dun, 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 dun. And you're like, oh, shit, this is getting real. <laughs> it's oh, not. God. <laughs> it's not at all. <laughs> um, but I do think the pair of glasses, because he w- starts wearing them for some reason, which is also fucking weird. Um, <laughs> he wears them for a period. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> this is my favorite scene in the movie, just because it's so ridiculous. And Oliver Reed might have been drowning this kid in real life. Um, <laughs> the dad starts, like, dunking the kid, and it starts out, like, pretty friendly. And then he's just throwing the kid. <laughs> just fucking manhandling his son. And then puts him in a headlock underwater. And he's clearly trying to drown the kid at this point. Yeah. Um, and Betty Davis is watching the whole time. And, I mean... I know Betty Davis is very elderly, but if you saw a grown man, you know, drowning a kid, wouldn't you at least like throw something at him or try to do something? Absolutely. She's, dude, she's not even, she's not even standing. Like at the very least you would move towards the edge and like raise your voice. Right. She's, she's literally laying down like she's sunbathing. She, she's like, and, Oh God, please stop it. And she's calling the son's name. Who's like underwater. Who I'd be like, thanks grandma. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Great. aunt. Like what the fuck are you doing? Thanks for calling my name. I, if I open my mouth, I'll just inhale water. But Thank you for calling my name. 
Um, the kid ends up breaking free by uh, throwing his goggles at Oliver Reed's nose and breaking his nose. And Oliver Reed slinks away like the fucking creature from the Black Lagoon. He does, dude, dude, I thought the same thing. He looks, he looks fucking evil. And it's actually pretty cool, right? Like, if they went that route, if they went the Shining route, that would have been fucking awesome. Like, that would have been so fucking cool. Um, but they don't, like, immediately after this, he's like, oh, my God, what did I do? And then... I thought, I thought that's exactly what they were going to do, even though this came out before The Shining. You know, I thought Oliver Reed was going to be the... Or, the, you know, Amityville Horror. I thought yeah. Oliver Reed was going to be the one to, you know, turn, and the house was making him go insane. And it's the fucking opposite. It's it's the mom that, that that's apparently going insane and getting possessed by the house. Which makes no fucking sense. Why even have this Oliver Reed scene in it? it, it because right after that, he's just like, boy, I don't know what uh, got into me. Yeah. And also, he's, he's like, I feel fucking terrible. And the mom's like, oh, don't. It's fine. He's like, no, I drowned that kid. <laughs> She's like, it's fine. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <clears throat> and yeah, like it's really alarming because the rest of the movie, Oliver Reed is overly kind to everyone. Yes. Like over the top, a kid breaks a dish, like a very expensive dish. And the mom freaks out, which honestly, she kind of has a reason to. We'll get to that. And the dad's like, can you fuck, do you fucking hear yourself? <laughs> <laughs> like of all the things to be upset about, that's not the one. <laughs> that's not the thing. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that night, the dad has creepy dreams of this hearse driver who will show up several times. So, again, no payoff to this, right? None to the hearse driver. None. Am I, I'm, I'm not mistaken, right? No, <laughs> I didn't no. Miss anything? No, he, he's like the most horror part of this movie. And like legitimately creepy. Like he he's grinning like a fucking maniac. Like he would make anybody feel uneasy. So, like... That was probably the coolest part of this movie as a horror fan, but there's no payoff to him whatsoever. There's no explanation for him. We don't, <laughs> we don't even know what the fuck he does. And like three quarters of the way through the movie, he's got like three appearances and you're like, okay, you're like, maybe he represents this or is this. Right. And then at the end, none of it matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think during this scene, we're seeing a flashback to his like mom's funeral, right? Yeah, he's having he dreams was about driver. his. He's having dreams about his mom's funeral, and he was the hearse driver um, for for the funeral, and he's just smiling, <laughs> which everyone should have been alarmed by, not just the child. <laughs> everyone at that funeral should have been like, "Hey, can that? Can you fucking tell that guy to stop fucking <laughs> smiling at the fucking funeral?" <laughs> fucking Hubie, <laughs> <laughs> Hubie Dubois. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then the wife wakes him up, and he's just like, oh, these dreams, like the kid. And she's like, ah, oh, don't worry about the kid. <laughs> uh, the mom starts looking around and finds, oh, yeah. We get, like, <clears throat> we get these insane scenes of of uh, exposition, sort of, of revelations. Like, the mom walks through the lawn of the backyard and is like, "Yep, this looks the same. I don't know what the fuck that means, and I don't know why it fucking matters. Shouldn't it look the same? I don't understand what that comment means. <laughs> but again, we know it's important because of the score blasting in our fucking ears. <laughs> oh, God. The mom and the dad go in the pool to get a little freaky. <clears throat> um, and again, I thought we were going to see the dad, like, turn here. Right, like we're gonna see the Jack Nicholson turn. He's gonna get like a little overly aggressive, and uh, that's not totally what happens. I mean, the dad's kind of creepy, but I think that's just <laughs> Oliver Reed, to be honest with you. Um, but the mom, like Oliver Reed's like coming onto the mom, and she's just not about it. Um, and, and it seems as if it's something we should know about already. You know, like some problem in the relationship, which has not been discussed. They seem a hundred percent fine, um, and they have this like heart to heart. Where nothing is really figured out, but Oliver Reed's just like, hey, man, like, aren't we in love? And she's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and then they start making out. <clears throat> she didn't want to do it in the pool. She was like, we can't do this here. But instead, they start doing it in the front lawn where the spotlights are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but even then, she sees a figure in the old lady's room and then freaks out and is just like, get off of me. Get off of me. 
Um, and and he just lays in the grass. <laughs> That's the end of that scene. Um, <clears throat> the rest of this movie is just exposition, which Joe Bob also references at this commercial break where he says, we get a lot of exposition in this part of the movie. And I hate exposition. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the movie is just um, explanations. Well, mm, that's not true. It's just background, but background that does not expose anything about, about the story. Right. Quite honestly. Right. Um, the grandma and the mom have an odd encounter um, where she's kind of like, hey, like, you know, what, what the fuck's going on? Um Meanwhile, the dad's outside, and we see the hearse driver pulling up. Yeah, again, uh, genuinely like a horror scene in this movie. Yeah. With the he's driving real slow, he's grinning like a maniac. Oliver, Oliver Reed's crying. Dude, uh, Oliver Reed is so drunk in this scene. His <laughs> face, his face is so red, and he's sweating. <laughs> Joe, he's also drinking a beer in this scene. So this might not have been. He might not have even seen the hearse or the guy. He might have just been having like a fucking drunken <laughs> meltdown that they filmed. <laughs> Just fucking crying in the lawn, drinking a beer. Fifteenth, <laughs> hundredth beer of Dude, the day. His his reactions, because how many times does this driver show up? It's like three or four, right? Yeah. Every time his reaction made me laugh because it's like when a little kid gets mad and just clenches her fist oh my God. and shakes, but like doesn't make any noise coming out. And just it's make like, their face vibrate. It's like the meme of the kid that's got the fucking vein going down his forehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, a hundred percent. That's that's Oliver Reed's acting fucking move. <laughs> when in doubt, just start shaking, getting fucking red face. <laughs> and he does it so many times actually in this movie, even without the hearse when he's paralyzed. Oh, dude, he's watching the kid out the window. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So we see the hearse driver. What does that mean? It means nothing. That night, all the clocks jump ahead 15 minutes and they go to midnight and they go off. Um, and for, okay, so this seems weird. So I guess the clocks, none of the clocks worked, right? Yeah. Now they do work. They're all going off at midnight. Yeah. Um, so the dad comes out. Okay. So that, I okay. That's pretty spooky. Okay. <laughs> but what makes him check on his son? And think that his son is in danger. I have no clue. My guess is nothing. And if the house was possessed or was a haunted house, why would they bring? All right. So basically what happens is he breaks down the kid's door, right? And the yep. kid's gas heater is leaking gas into the room and the kid's fucking dying. Um, so Oliver Reed goes in and saves him. What? <laughs> If the house was trying to kill the kid, why would it suddenly turn on all the alarms to be like, wake up and save your kid? Great point. Great point. Just tipping him off. Oh, we're going to give you a clue. The James Bond of fucking haunted houses. <laughs> oh, how did you foil my plan? Um, yeah, so Oliver Reed saves the kid who, who has been poisoned with gas. Um, and you think that would be enough to fucking leave? Just be like, dude, this house is old. It's fucking falling apart. We're not staying here. Like, fucking right. gas leaks. Get the fuck out of here. But it doesn't. And the mom blames the grandma for everything. <laughs> Mom's like, were you the last one in there? The so, aunt. The aunt. You or the aunt. The yeah, yeah. The aunt. I mean, it should be grandma, but whatever. The aunt. She's like, <laughs> were you Were you in there? She's like, yeah, I gave him a blanket. And she's like, oh, how convenient. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> and my grandma gets all upset. Dude, the Oliver Reed talking to his aunt scene is honestly like mind numbing. It was, it, it was just like, dude, it was like a family feud scene. Like, it was just like, oh my God, what a fucking headache. And Oliver Reed goes down and yells at, at his fucking wife. And it's just like, I was just, I got a headache watching it. Cause I was like, this is like real family shit. Like, I, I don't want to deal with this. The aunt's crying, being like, she was mean to me. <laughs> Accusing me of something. And then he goes down, he's like, nice fucking job, you made my aunt cry. <laughs> what a fucking headache. Which, by the way, the aunt just watched him almost, <laughs> almost fucking drown his own son. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, man. Um, 
Yeah, and and oh, also the mom, uh, the aunt explained to the mom. Um, she or she said something about Mrs. Allardyce. She's like, "Oh, it's all you care about." And the mom's like, "Get out of here!" So the mom's getting more <laughs> temper, like more temper tantrumy. So we're seeing that shift from like Oliver Reed being the bad guy to the mom being the bad guy or the possessed one. Um, they have another big to do upstairs, and this will happen two or three more times where the mom and the dad have the same fucking fight of uh, being like, we need to leave. This place sucks. And then b- the mom being like, but what about Mrs. Allardyce? <laughs> <laughs> and then ultimately being like, okay, fine. <laughs> it's fucking awful. Um, and then this, the scene with the crystal bowl is probably the strangest scene in the movie, mainly because <laughs> what little boy like picks up a bowl, takes it to the middle of a room and then just like stares at it. <laughs> Right. Holding it like very loosely, staring at a bowl. I could get a, I could get anybody looking at a nice bowl if it was like over the table or anything. He had to have picked it up and moved it to the middle of the room where he's now just looking at it and basically holding it upside down with barely any grip on it. So when the mom comes in, he drops it. It shatters. She loses her fucking mind. Um, <laughs> and fucking, fucking Oliver Reed walks in and just is like fucking staring a hole <laughs> right through her. Um, and later we'll be like, how dare you talk to him like that? It's like, dude, why is that kid holding a fucking bowl? Put the fucking bowl down. Go do something. Also, we have a fucking pool. I just want to remind everyone, uh, nobody's died yet and nothing else has happened other than things breaking and, you know, things almost, almost going poorly. Nothing's Which, honestly, uh, broken. The kid broke the it's fucking all just like, Yeah, it's all just like maintenance issues that you would encounter <laughs> if the house wasn't haunted. Lights you know? now, a couple lights that didn't work, but then worked seconds later, and clocks that just turned on by themselves. That's the creepiest thing, and quite frankly, I would still, I'm fucking terrified of everything. If that happened, I'd still probably be like, well, I mean, that's fucking bizarre, but maybe... They're like all in sync. You know what I mean? And they they finally just went off or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be that fucking. <laughs> I would fucking explain it away. It wouldn't be enough to make you be like, I gotta get that. I gotta get out of this house. No. No, I mean, me, if I started drowning my son and was like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> I, I might want to go home, but that's probably just so I could check myself into a fucking mental ward. <laughs> um, something finally happens, though, sort of. <laughs> the, the gra- I don't know what it is, to be honest with you. The grandma is having a hard time in bed. She's in uh, bed. Aunt. Or the aunt. Whatever. She's a fucking grandma. <sighs> <laughs> the aunt is in bed. She's sweating. She can barely get up. She looks like she's dying. And then it appears that a ghost slaps her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happens. I assumed she was dead, though, because I was waiting for anything to happen. She's not. <laughs> She's very much alive. And in the same state she was in before. So I don't know what that thing was that happened to her and sounded like a slap. But um, Dude, I, I know I know I'm jumping ahead like like a scene, but I want to ask you before I forget about it. Yeah. I thought she died and like and maybe she did and she came back. I, I'm literally I'm literally asking you. I thought she died and Oliver Reed was like going in to mourn her and then she just she's just like awake again. Um, did you, I, I did you think, notice that? Yeah. Well, so I, you would assume she died, but then, yeah, no, Oliver Reed's just like hanging out in there with her. I think she was just supposed to be like super ill. Okay. <laughs> Cause when he goes in, I mean, I mean, I mean, she looked terrible to begin with, but when he goes in, she's like not moving. Her eyes are like in the back of her head. And uh, like, there's no way that she had a pulse. And then all of a sudden, she's just like talking again, like yeah. five minutes later. Yeah. Wait, and what? I, yeah. And I mean, they call nine one one, and he's like, "It's busy," which he blames the mom for, which is bizarre. He's like, "Hey, nice job, idiot. The lines are busy." <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and then she goes down, and she's like, "No, they work." But oh, dude, this scene is so fucking weird, right? So. <laughs> So the mom goes upstairs and starts eating Mrs. Allard- Allardars- Allardars' food or whatever her name is. Like as if she's Mrs. Allardyce. Right. So you're like, oh, I guess that's where this is going. Um, meanwhile, the dad's downstairs 
with the aunt. And then the hearse driver shows up and is kicking down the door. And the dad and the aunt are like in each other's arms and like terrified. And the hearse driver breaks in and fucking th- throws a fucking casket at them. <laughs> Which is fucking crazy. And you're like, oh, th- is this really happening? Or is this a figment of their imagination? And the next scene, and I was like, if he kills them both, that would be kind of cool, right? Yeah. Well, only the aunt's dead. And there's no reference to this fucking hearse driver <laughs> throwing a casket at them. Right. So you're like, oh, maybe the hearse driver represents death or is um, somebody that comes to collect, right? Yeah. Yes. I thought the same thing. Okay. Which he probably is. But then why but... would he show up all those other times and just like drive by being like, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> just a prankster. A collector he's, and prankster. He's a fucking asshole. And honestly, if that was their goal, they failed at it. They just failed. Like, I, it, it, you can tell me that's what it was. That's fine. But they did not do a good job of it. And, and it looks like shit. Because then he doesn't show up at the end. He does, Or does he show up at the very end? I I don't think so. I don't. Th- oh, no, it doesn't. It just fucking ends. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Oh, yeah, no, it ends with the voiceover. Yeah, with Burgess Meredith. Yeah, and the pictures. Oh, my yeah. God. <sighs> well. The aunt's dead. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the funeral. Um, when they come back... Uh, <sighs> Wait, what? What? They? Oh, they have that dinner when they come back from the funeral, <laughs> and she's like, "I don't." There's nothing to talk about in that. The mom's just asking. <laughs> the mom's just acting irrationally, right? She's just acting very proper, as if maybe she is Mrs. Allardyce. Like she's right. like, "Don't ruin the table. Drink out of a fucking goblet." <laughs> um, and then it starts raining, and the house starts shedding. It's dirty, yeah. it's dirty boards. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, which I guess was kind of cool. Like, I guess <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool. Um, and he it was ru- too, too little, too late for me too. Uh, and like, I know th- th- there were like some scenes before where the house was fixing itself. So, you know, again, if you're about to yell at us, like, yeah, I picked up on it, but it, it didn't. It didn't fucking mean anything. Also, there's a there's like a there's like a half dozen more scenes from outside of the house, and it looks exactly the same. It still has all the shit on it. I know. <laughs> they didn't fucking clean it. It was just this one scene. Like, so they didn't even do a good job. Again, they didn't do a good job of it. I don't care if you're defending this movie. Uh, you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Pack your shit. Pack your shit. Get out of the fucking house. Me and your mom are fucking sick of you. It's time to fucking get the fuck out. I'm tired of your. I'm tired of your lip. This is this. This movie ain't it. This movie is not the movie to defend. It's fucking agreed. I awful. completely agree. Not not the fucking hill to die on. A hundred percent. Um. So the dad goes into his son's room and wakes him up, being like, "The house. The house is changing." <laughs> That's all he gives his son, and then is like, "We gotta go." And then the son's like screaming. He doesn't want to leave. Which, if I'm the son, I'm like, dude, get me the fuck out of here, please. Whatever you need to do, let's fucking go. Um, they drive. Although, although, if my dad burst into my room, it was like the, the house is changing. We have to leave without your mother. I'd be like, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with you. <laughs> That's very true. Um, but at least the dad could have been like, the dad should have been like, you need to come look at this. Like this is insane. Instead, he's just like, the house is changing. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Um, they get in the car. They drive away. Are they going to escape? Nope. A fucking tree falls in the way. And then somehow the mom shows up and gets in the car and is like, I'll take you back. <laughs> the dad's like, you were part of this, which I wish I knew what that was. I wish I knew what. The- <laughs> I wish I knew what I was supposed to understand at this point. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh the dad sees the hearse guy again in the mom's face. Um doesn't do it. He doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> but back at the house there's a doctor checking in on him. Uh he says he needs to be hospitalized and he should be brought to the hospital in the city. What is this scene for? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think other than to be like 
he's heavily sedated, which yeah, anyone anyone could have said. <laughs> yeah. The son and the mom would have done just fine. You could have, they could have not even said anything. He could have just sat still and just been like, you be like, oh wow, that guy's. He's got a traumatic brain injury. Shit. Yeah, he got fucked yeah. up. He got banged up, and now he's now he's just like a little loopy. You don't even say anything. <laughs> Instead, they've brought in a doctor who, <laughs> for no reason, fucking insane. On a road that was closed by a fucking fallen tree. By a tree. That they, they couldn't get. That's the reason why they're back at the house. <laughs> well, the dad is sedated in his wheelchair. Um, and he's out in the he's out by the pool with his son, who's like, I can swim in the deep end. Wanna see me swim in the deep end? Dude, this kid's like 16 years old. <laughs> like, watch me swim in the deep end now. And the mom, the mom's like screaming from the inside, like no, it's the deep end. <laughs> and the pool, like the waves are splashing the kid around, and then he goes underwater, um, and he's drowning. And the dad is doing that fucking shaking thing in the chair, but he's not speaking, and he's just like fuck, on himself, yeah. <laughs> fucking shaking and fucking br- bursting a blood vessel in his head. Um, and the mom, you said, is in the house, right? And this time, she she gets locked in the house. The, the house locks her inside. Yeah. So she can't get out. She, of course, manages to, though, by, like, just going through a back door. Haunted houses, they're just like people, man. They, <laughs> they, they always forget to lock one door, you know? Like, <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Um, so the mom's able to get out. Um, she saves the son. The family, including like the paralyzed dad, who's like <laughs> shitting his pants on the fucking floor. Uh, they all have a big hug, and Davy's like, "The boy's like, I hate this place. I want to leave." And the mom's like, "We are leaving today." Great news. They're about to leave. They're packed up. They're in the car, and then the mom's like, "Oh, I, I need to go see Mrs. Allardyce." And he's like, "Why?" Also, She's, <laughs> can I? Can I can I just pause for one second? Yeah, yeah. This is this is the end. <laughs> this is the end. This is, this is the end. So if you've been following to this point, <laughs> one person has died, and everything else was just mild inconveniences, which they all got by unscathed. This is the final scene. This is the payoff. This so, is the so payoff. This is on. the payoff to to not a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> And the old lady that died was was you know a ninety year old woman. She was on her way out. <laughs> so it's it's just it's this movie is, is something. Um, and then the mom's about to go in, and he's like, "Why?" And she's like, "I need to leave the lady my phone number," <laughs> which is insane because the woman has not spoken to anyone. So. <laughs> I don't think she's going to fucking call you. Also, you just got locked in the house. Like, you don't need to do anything. Also, even this series of scenes is 20 minutes long. <laughs> and, and it doesn't need to be at all. Um, so the mom goes in. She doesn't come back out. By the way, also, I, I'm going to interrupt this. I would say for certain, do not watch this. Because <laughs> I would agree. we are explaining this. To a T, you are not missing out on anything, dialogue included. <laughs> you are not missing out on fucking anything. This is, this is fine. You're getting the whole story here, and this is it. <laughs> and it's actually a little better because, of course, I throw in some f bombs into the character dialogue that don't actually exist. Because <laughs> in the movie, they're just like, "Oh, John, <laughs> what, a, yeah. what a fuck ever." Yeah. All right. Um. So the mom doesn't come back out. So the dad goes in. He daringly opens Mrs. Allardyce's door, um, but of course knocks first. <laughs> it's like at this point, like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, <laughs> he, we see an old lady sitting by the window. She's not answering him. He spins the chair around, and dude, it, he's giving her. So, dude, he's pleading with her. This, 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 another thing that drives me crazy in this movie, like. You're waiting for your wife. You can't find her in the house. You know she just went into the house. And you know this fucking crazy old bat <laughs> has been sitting in the room by herself. Like, to your point, he knocked. He had to give the kind of courtesy. And he's just standing there while she's facing the window, being like, I'm I'm talking to you, ma'am. Please, oh, that was the funniest please, part. Please respond. Like, fuck you. <laughs> like, 
kidding me? Just walk in and just go up to her. Like, what are you doing? Dude, that was my favorite part when he's like, won't you answer me? <laughs> and pleading. <laughs> Respond back, please. <laughs> he spins the chair around and it's his wife. <laughs> Who, it looks kind of old, but also looks kind of exactly the same, and just her eyes are a little, like, I think foggy. she put in contacts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, that's the reveal, right? That's She's- the big reveal. So, the mom has been possessed, which, like, we kind of knew. Yeah. Okay, so that's fine. But where's the old lady? She's just... The where's the, the old house. lady? What's the deal with the house? Right. Um. Also, the dad is either jumps... Jumped, wait, jumps or is thrown out of the window? I think he jumps because he's just like, ah, oh my God. And, and then throws himself from the window. And then throw. <laughs> he lands face first on the car. Dude, this kid, this scene is fucking good. Like, if we had more of those, it would be enjoyable because uh, usually when a, somebody gets thrown from a high, you know, vantage point, you don't really see like the splatter. Like, you just see like, you know, somebody being thrown and then yeah. you hear the thud like you watch this guy's face get mashed into the uh the windshield oh absolutely absolutely he he hits the windshield with such force and they even do a close-up on his fucking mangled face yeah. and the kid is covered in fucking blood <laughs> dude they must have not even told him that was gonna happen. <laughs> the, kid, the kid is so startled and is screaming <laughs> Oh my god. And the kid runs out covered in blood. He's like, Mom, mom. And then conveniently stands under a crumbling chimney and fucking dies. <laughs> the chimney falls on him, and that's the end of him. Um, and then we get the voiceover of um we see some photo frames, and uh Burgess Meredith is telling us um it's glorious and our mother, she's back. And then we see at the end of the table. The three family members' photos are on it. Which, I, <laughs> like, dude, why does that make sense? So, like, I had a few theories about it, like, at first, but, like, the ending just is doesn't explain it to you, so you have no idea. So, my theory was, like, at first I was like, okay, the hearse driver is kind of like death or whatever. The house needs fuel to, like, yep. to constantly be, like, keep itself alive. And that's why it's going to kill everyone. But then I don't understand why it needs the mother then, unless it's the mother they need. I don't know. Why right. does it Why matter? didn't it just, why didn't, you know, too many moving parts. Why wasn't it just a house that, you know, killed the people that moved in? Why, why didn't the why, house actually did, do anything scary? <laughs> yeah. Why, why did the mom turn into the old lady? Why couldn't she just be possessed? It makes no fucking sense. And that's Burnt Offerings, a movie um, I fucking hate. <laughs> We all learned a uh, a valuable lesson here. Oh yeah, uh, very valuable it's, lesson. Very it's valuable. that that <laughs> voting matters unless you voted for somebody that didn't win, and then your vote meant absolutely nothing. <laughs> also, the choices that you're presented are always garbage. A fucking douche and a turd sandwich. <laughs> when you're voting between a douche and a turd sandwich, no one wins. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was fucking rough. But the rest of the month I'm excited about, uh, we're doing Halloween four next week. Um, and then after that, we're doing Halloween town and then the week after, cause it's only a few days after Halloween, we are going to do Halloween 2018. Highly requested. Highly requested. I'm pumped. Everyone else is pumped. We tried to do, um, our Patreon, um, watch along this weekend. It was, um, not great (laughs) the first one actually went off pretty well we started on youtube we got banned (laughs) like within a minute then we jumped to facebook and we watched family matters and we had a blast there was only like four or five people in there but it worked and it was great good job yep so i'm like this is cool like we can do this so then me and joe do the 10 o'clock we had a few technical issues but nothing nothing too bad we do the 10 o'clock we do alf (laughs) An Alf Halloween episode. And for whatever reason, <laughs> they had no issues with Family Matters. A humongous hit in, in all countries. Uh, 
Alf, for whatever reason, they were like, they they found one minute and 16 seconds of copyrighted data, and they, they shut us down on that one. Alf but, season two, episode six. And, and we were able to like continue it. Anyone that was in there was kind of able to still see us and hear us, but it was really glitchy after that. Um, so it didn't work out too good. So I don't know what we're going to try next time. I think we might do, uh, I think the next one um, for November we'll do on, we'll try it on Twitch just to see. Um, and if that gets shut down, we'll try to do something super obscure. And if that gets shut down, then we will uh, kind of move to just uh, me and Joe just talking on a YouTube live stream or a Facebook live stream. So you could watch it on your phone and then watch, we'll sync the movies up together on the TV. Um, and I think that's probably the best way to do it. Right. Yeah. But we'll try it Twitch first. Cause it is, it is really fucking cool to have them, the show in the background. I do kind of dig it, but, um, it might just be easier for everyone to do it the other way, but you know, it was a good time. It was a good time. And then we did yeah, a fucking two hour to our Instagram live. We did. They did. did. <laughs> Got way too drunk. I don't fucking, it's for no reason on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> felt like shit all day today. Oh, dude, I've I, I was sick last night, and I've been sick for like a week, and like last night did not fucking help. That's why I feel like that's why I'm fucking coughing into a microphone, which somebody's gonna tell me about tomorrow, even though I <laughs> said acknowledged it. Uh, that's it. Um, the new Patreon stickers are coming out soon. Oh, not just Patreon. Well, I guess it's just Patreon. I don't know. The new stickers are coming out soon. The design is fucking amazing. I don't think I've even shown Joe the new design. Um, if I did, it was back you during the not. first run because it was. I actually had these made um, by an artist who's a fan of the show. I forget her name, unfortunately, but I'll shout her out later. Um, th- this 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 gal, I think she's from Florida. Um, I'll, I'll get her name and plug her in the next episode. Th- there are these Mangal expert. Um, stickers. Oh my God. They're fucking amazing. And we're going to start doing some enamel pins um, with Knights of the pins is going to help us with that. Um, so that's coming, but the stickers are, should be here this week, hopefully. So um, I'll get those all in the mail to all the Patreon supporters. We'll do the shout outs for Patreon soon. Um, and yeah, that, it was, it was, it was fun, man. It, it was fun. It was the Instagram live two hour live. From like It was from 11 to 1 AM. And, uh, yeah, that fucked that fucked my day up pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun though. We could, we could uh, I had a blast. Games. I had a fucking blast. It was really good. I'm excited for the next watch along. And we're also considering this is just throwing it out there. It's just an idea, but sometimes I feel like uh if I throw this out there and then people start messaging me constantly about it, which is usually what happens, then I'm forced to do it, <laughs> which is um maybe do a live show, like a pay-per-view live show. Um like the fucking concert the the bands are doing and stuff. And we'll do like a live show like we have done in the past, but just live stream it. Um, yeah. Maybe get some guests in some fucking, maybe get some Paul, maybe some mic drop ins. It'll be like Pee Wee's Playhouse, <laughs> but dumber. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot less funny and creative. <laughs> Paul just lecturing. Imagine if fucking Paul showed up to Pee Wee's Playhouse and was just like, "You fucking idiot, Pee Wee!" <laughs> Dude, out Pee Wee's Pee Wee. Outlaw Josie Wales wasn't made in 1977. You fucking idiot. It was made in 1976. <laughs> what are you f- fucking ignorant? <laughs> You're making a fool of yourself out here. <laughs> I'm actually Googling when Outlaw Josie Wales was made because Paul will... Oh, it, it was 76. All right. He won't, he won't take umbrage with it. If I got that wrong, he would have fucking... I can't even tell you. He'd be so fucking irritated. It might have been the last straw for the show, to be honest with you. After the recent string of harassment, you might have been like, I'm fucking done. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, that's it, man. Um, do you have anything to talk about? I do not. So this is probably like the slower paced one of our new uh, our new run, <laughs> uh, but I still think it was a solid episode, an all right episode. Um, it, it it was way better than I was anticipating because I was like, "How are we going to talk about this for even thirty minutes?" Yeah, that's why I had all those monster vision facts written. <laughs> no, I, dude, I I meant to say that when you were doing it, I was like, "Thank God you fucking looked something up." Because <laughs> what are we going to do? 
this movie was just fucking uh it was incredible man like <laughs> it was insane but don't worry halloween 4 is next week i'm sure we'll have plenty to say there um did we do halloween 5 we did a halloween 5 100 percent. that's the one with paul rudd no that's that's six that's six okay so i don't know which one we did then because Somebody gave us a list of ones that we haven't done, and it was totally incorrect because I know we've done some of them. But <laughs> Dude, you sent me that. It was like, they listed like Halloween two through. Three. They said H two O, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. So yeah, so you pointed out though we did a Jamie Lee Curtis, a bunch of them for Jamie Lee Curtis. Week. Yeah, our first like year we did uh, like a Valentine's Day. Yeah, tribute to Jamie Lee. Yeah, so like really we could do those movies again, but I don't think I want to. But um. <laughs> Halloween 5, I know I fucking watched because Jason well, crying is fucking insane. Well, Michael Myers. Or, uh, yeah, I'm only correcting Myers. you just because you, you know somebody will be like, who? Oh, um, no, absolutely, absolutely. But, yeah, the reason, insane, I was asking, yeah. <laughs> the reason I was asking is because people on the live stream were, were referencing it. And I was like, is that something, like, is that a known fact that we were pissed off about that? Or are I they do, just anticipating? Please, somebody tell us because I looked through our list and I could not find it anywhere. But I know, I know we talked about it, dude, because that scene, that whole beginning scene where it's like Jason floating down a fucking river, (laughs) fucking Michael Myers floating down a fucking river and then like landing in a cave and then like that homeless guy taking care of him. It was fucking madness. (laughs) One of the most insane setups ever. (laughs) I could not believe that. I I mean, if we didn't do five, I would love to. In the Jamie Jamie Lee one, we talked about H two O, which is so embarrassing because so many movies that I had strong opinions about when we first started the show, I've since rewatched. Like especially when we weren't doing the show anymore, yeah. And I was like, wait, why, why was I like H two O is perfectly fine. It was totally fun, and I'm pretty sure we both shit on it the entire time. Yeah, I mean, listen, is is it fine? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, better than the Buster Rhymes one. I, I see I see what you're saying though. There is um uh and maybe that's the difference with this time around. I mean, we've already seen a bunch of movies where we we were like, this movie's fucking awesome. You know what I mean? Like um and maybe maybe we're not just so like this movie sucks. Um you know. You can you can make fun of a movie and still like it. But I don't know about H two O. Was H two O the one where they start in the asylum? No, that's the Buster Rhymes um, one. Yeah, H two. No, H two was the one with. Uh, it starts with Joseph Gordon Levitt, and LL Cool J gets shot in the face, and he, he appears like two seconds later with with like a band a bandage wrapped around his head. It's like the smallest <laughs> bandage wrapped around his head. He's totally fine. Got shot in the fucking brain. <laughs> oh my god! Well, somebody let us know about Halloween Five. We're doing Halloween Four next week. <clears throat> And I'm excited. I I don't remember the last time I saw that. It's probably been fucking forever. Uh, I watch it every year. So. Do you? Do you, how many Halloween movies do you watch every year? I watch uh, all. Of them. Sometimes I'll I'll skip five and six, but I try and I try and get them all in. Oh, cool. That's not. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I do not include H two O or Resurrection in that. But the first six, I, I always do the first four. Okay. All right. That's cool. Um, maybe I'll do the same thing. Dude, two is so great, and we did two. Is a right? great sequel. Again, I think that was uh, Jamie during Lee. Jamie Lee week. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Maybe I'll watch them all with this year also. Um. And that's it, man. So we got we. That's it. We got um a good good three weeks ahead of us. Um. November. Ooh. Well, it's gonna be that's gonna be a rough one. Don't Somebody told me. us to do Thanks Killing again, which I would probably do. We do we do an episode again. I've always been curious what we would do, and I'm 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 I feel like if there's anything that we could continue talking about, it might be <laughs> Thanksgiving. Well, I could recite line for line right now. <laughs> Thanksgiving. That's how many times I've seen. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. All right. Well, that's it. I'm gonna try and get fucking rested up and not be sick next week. Um, <laughs> And then uh, that's it, man. Thank you for doing the show. Thank you all for listening. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, the weekend was really fun. Um, whip my ass, but it, it was a it was a good time. Um, so I appreciate that. 
and uh, stay tuned. And Patreon is blowing up. We did some fucking great bonus episodes. Did we? we I guess we didn't even talk about the bonus episode from last week during the show. No, uh, but people have been asking for Paul, and he makes an appearance. Delivered an appearance. He t- talks for thirty minutes straight. <laughs> <laughs> Just lecturing us about, we talk about Yagenberg, we talk about Rodney Mullen, we talk about a bunch of other shit. Um, so check out that Patreon episode. It's so, it's really fucking good. I was laughing the entire time. It's amazing. And the unreleased episode is also Paul and Joe talking about um, Yagenberg. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, so it's, it's a good time. It's a good time over at Patreon. Uh, a lot more involved. We've probably done more episodes than we did. Um, ever we're not recording one tonight because i'm sick but next week we'll we'll get back to recording them uh weekly or bi-weekly or whatever we decide to do but um all right man that's it uh so for joe this is sean stay weird thank you adios I got a, I die, I die, I die,